So this is the picture of the chloroplast in which photosynthesis occurs and there are two different parts to it. We have the light dependent reaction and we have the light independent reaction also known as the Calvin First, cycle. First we're going to explain the light dependent reaction which takes place in the thylakoid. Here we have the light dependent reaction in which water is located in a thylakoid lumen and it is divided into three molecules, oxygen, hydrogen and electrons. When the electrons go into photosystem 2, it absorbs light and transfers itself through the electron transport chain into photosystem 1, where it is then transferred into NAD, NADP and is combined with a hydrogen ion to create NADPH, which is then transferred to the Kelvin cycle. When the hydrogen is separated from the water, ion, water molecule, it goes through the ATP synthase and it is turned into ADP which then takes in a phosphate and creates ATP and then transfers to the Calvin cycle. And that whole process right there is called chemiosmosis. When oxygen separates itself from the water molecule, mm -hmm. it takes itself through the thylakoid membrane into the stroma. Next, we are going to explain the Calvin cycle, also known as the light independent reaction. So the Calvin cycle occurs in the stroma and it is also known as the light independent reaction, carbon fixation and the dark, dark cycle. So the Calvin cycle starts off with a 5 carbon ca compound which is called RUBP. RUBP gets fixed with carbon dioxide that comes from the atmosphere and this results in a 6 carbon sugar which is in, that is unstable. So to make it stable, the 6-carbon molecule breaks it up into two 3-carbon compounds, which is called PGA. Okay. Next, ATP donates the phosphate and NADPH donates a hydrogen electron to form two new 3-carbon compounds called triosphosphate. After the cycle has gone around 6 times, there will be a formation of 12 TPs and 2 TPs to make glucose and then 10 TPs to make more RUBP. And ATP helps ATP helps 10 TPs form RUBP molecules and then the cycle begins again. So overall you need 18 ATPs. If the cycle were to go on six times, it would be 18 ATPs. And 12 NADPH are needed to fix six CO2 molecules and one glucose. In the cytoplasm, we have the mitochondria, and the mitochondria is where cellular respiration occurs. And this middle part of the mitochondria is called the matrix, and this part is the inner membrane space. And this outline is the cristae, and the outer membrane is this part right here. And basically, cellular respiration has three different parts to it. There is glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation, and the third Thing is, is the Krebs cycle. The first step in cellular respiration is called glycolysis and glycolysis has two processes called glucose activation and energy harvest. In glucose activation you have six carbon molecules which join together to make two ATP and form two ADP. The phosphates on each end of the carbon molecules make the, make the entire compound negatively charged. The second process in the Glycolysis is called the energy harvest, where two three carbon molecules form join to form a four ADP, which then converts into a four ATP. The two NAD plus converts this energy into two NADH, which creates a two three carbon pyruvate. So, the second step in cellular respiration is pyruvate oxidation and that is where you're forming acetyl-CoA and when we have oxygen that is available one carbon dioxide is removed from each pyruvate and NAD positive is then reduced to NADH and coenzymes get attached to the remaining two carbons which is the acetyl group to make acetyl-CoA and this happens two times because there are two pyruvates so the Krebs cycle is the third step in cellular respiration and is also known as the cystric acid cycle and it occurs in the matrix. So it starts off with a four carbon molecule called oxaloacetate and then it takes in two carbon molecules which is acetyl-CoA 
and then you get a six carbon molecule which is called citric acid and then moving down here CO2 is released and NAD positive turns into NADH and then you get a five carbon molecule and then this process repeats over here a CO2 is lost and you get NAD positive NADH again and over here ADP converts into ATP and then you're left with a four carbon molecule and over here FAD converts into FADH2 and then moving along here you have NAD positive turning into NADH you're back to the four carbon molecule and the cycle begins again